So I've done a very, very bad thing. Uh, I've been trying to do this four stroke build, but I've had frustrating delays in postage where I've ordered things and suddenly they're out of stock. Chiefly being the new rim that I'm waiting for, but also the, the uh, crank removal tool. Uh, I can't get my hands on one anywhere. But what I can get is a grinder. Yes, I have finally managed to get the crank off. But this is a useless, useless crank now. So I've got to go ahead and try and remove the other side. Hopefully without actually damaging the middle bit. Now I did manage to take a little bit off with the grinder. I <laughs> don't know if you'll be able to see that. Yeah, see that right there. Um, because it slipped. But hopefully that won't do too much damage. Alrighty. Both sets are off. I'm pretty sure the only thing that got that off was the heat that I put into it with the grinder. But now I've got to spray the Jesus out of that and hope that all the filings get washed out. We've given the poor old girl a bit of a, a clean down, a solid degreasing. The next step for me to do is to grab that crank set and start sticking it on the bike. Interesting to note that the chain ring I'm putting on is a fair sight smaller than the one that came off it, which probably means I'll have to take a few links out of the chain anyway, which is not a big deal. The chain was always a bit loose anyway. Um, removing links isn't too bad. At least the chain on this bike uh, has its own master link, so I don't have to worry so much about using up all my spares like I had to on that bike. So our new crank pedals are on. Now I'm not a huge fan of that chrome look so I'm going to go ahead and uh, give these a quick coating of black enamel. All right. So I'm sorry about my camera work today. We've got the transmission out for preparation and all the videos I've seen this has come in pieces anyway um, so it was a bit of a surprise to see that it was assembled i was confused about these nuts but they are just well they're basically packaging bolts to stop these from falling out obviously this is what's um connecting to the motor now i do wonder whether or not i will have to retension that but it doesn't feel too tight or too loose yet but I've got the tools I need to be able to do that if I have to. Um, this is not an ideal place to be doing any kind of engine work but it's pretty much all I've got. So with the engine out obviously this is where we're going to be mounting our uh, transmission and it will be just a drop of thread locker in there because it's definitely something you don't want vibrating loose so these are literally only finger tight um, you don't want to do it up all the way just get them in there evenly and snug you're going to give your wheel a turn what you're listening for basically is that there's no unnecessary contact between the bell housing Well, that feels pretty snug to me, like there's no visible contact. You do have to keep a firm hold on it because when these bolts are not secure, this bell housing will just come loose. That's how you take it apart. Um, so you do want to make sure that everything is centered. All 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead now and snug all these four bolts up nice and tight. All right, you're going to notice a difference in the quality now because I had to change to the action camera. My phone battery died, but you'll still get the gist. All right, this camera's not too good for the close-up stuff, but we'll make do. All right, so I've snugged up uh, all of these. Now, let's just tuck that hose out of the way. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and pop our case back on. All right, so we're going to start with the three screws at the front there. We'll do our final adjustment on the rear. Now, we're currently balancing it on a step. This is not a brilliant place to do any kind of work, but that's all I've got, really. So we'll make do. Now, these are not being done up all the way. There's about a thread and a bit remaining. Because we want to make sure that this one is lined up. Now, I went ahead and I moved uh, the bracket down. It was sitting in this hole, which meant that this part was right up close. All right. So let me try and get you in there. So there's plenty of clearance in that wheel now. Um, so now I just need to make sure that when I turn this wheel, there's, it's not contacting the case like it was in the first instance. All right, so... So you can hear it. All right. So we've got a flat washer, a lock washer, and our nut. Do you know what? I'm going to put just a drop of thread locker here too because it's better to be safe than sorry in my opinion. First of all, I completed the build. Now I was planning to film it but it was such a royal pain in the bum that I just had to get it done. Uh, but let me show you what I've done. So, it fits barely. It doesn't look so bad on the surface of it. I've got the 36 tooth rear sprocket. Now, instinct is telling me not to use this rim because the hub is well and truly on its way out. But, impatience got the better of me. Now, I did have to trim away some of this guard here because the pedal, it still connects, but not so bad. Um, now, I can't push the engine any further that way because then I start having alignment issues over here. Moving around to the other side. Now, I've completely rooted that frame there, and you'll notice I've snapped the top of the choke lever off. Uh, I had to do that. It was the only way I was getting the engine in. I did have to grind 
a fair amount of this away. The, the more you look, the worse it gets, really. Um, now, I haven't yet tried to start this up. So there's our fuel line slowly pressurizing. Now I'm just looking at these lines here to make sure that nothing's leaking. Alright, let me flip that on. We've got oil, we've got fuel, let's give it a rip start. How's that? It started second pull. Alright. Now a few things I need to do. Secure the brake lever.